Hello, this is Shashi from LiveTantra.com and today we're exploring something really interesting, which is looking at the Egyptian system of spirituality and finding out if there is an Egyptian Kundalini or an equivalent Kundalini. So joining me today, I'm going to be with Yasmin Hanna, who is herself half Egyptian, and she comes from the School of Egyptian Temple Arts, and she's also an ISTA facilitator. So let's welcome her here. Hello. Hello, dear. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for joining me. This is such an interesting topic because... Yes. I myself have noticed a lot of Tantra facilitators going off to Egypt and connecting to the spirituality there. Um, you know, and yet we know that Tantra is coming from India and Taoism that I study is coming mm. from China. So it's really great to have you here to delve a little bit deeper into the investigation around Kundalini from Egyptian system. Yes. So you yourself, you've studied yoga and Tantra. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your own path? Just, you know, put all the pieces together. Sure. So I grew up in Egypt. There was already an influence, of course, by seeing the pyramids, the papyruses. I was always like, already felt a connection to something more spiritual that, you know, there's other realms. Um, but I couldn't find what I wanted from the land from growing up there. So I, ran, I went to India and I studied uh, Tantra for many years. I was into Kundalini Yoga. I did a lot of meditation, silent retreats. For about uh, five or six years, I was deeply immersed in the Eastern tradition and studied Tantra and was specifically on that path um, until I started to feel like my something deeper in my roots was calling me, you know? So it was only until I went deep into the jungle and traveled the world that I realized it was always there back home, like the story of, like the, story of the alchemist, you know? So yeah. it's like, go back to Egypt. And I just kept seeing the carvings, the symbols, the temples. So that, mm. that took me back there. And then my deeper investigation with myself, but also with the land and more with the truth. What's, what's written here in the land on these walls? And is there a spirituality? Is there a, is there a system here? And of course there is. It's all recorded. So mm -hmm. a lot of this information is kept. Um, there's beautiful schools throughout Africa, also in America. So yes, there's a whole com comedic uh, spirituality movement that uh, in the West is not really known. So a lot of what comes in the West is through downloads or through <laughs> transmissions, but actually there are being to have, there are texts, there are recordings, and that's what I'm interested in, is what's really what's happening there. And mm -hmm. how can we tap into that great, beautiful reservoir of wisdom, basically, yeah. The Kemetic, that's the name of the system, like we have Tantra, Taoism, and then Kemetic spirituality. Yeah, there's different names. Kemetic is just to honor the land of Kemet, which is Egypt, which was, of course, part of Africa. So it's the word for Egypt uh, in the ancient way. Yeah. I got it. Now I made the connection with a K, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking with a C, and but now I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Amazing. So, having yourself studied Kundalini Yoga and Tantra um, very deeply, how, how what similarities have you found? Like, un, you know, like obviously it's different names, different words for everything. But uh, can you find similarities? Like, for example, do they work with the sexual energy um, as well as the spiritual realm? Oh, yes, so much. <laughs> yes, part of the carvings on the temple walls, what's so beautiful is to see the erect phallus, the honoring of the erection with the seed sprouting out to honor fertility. This is life force energy. So it was very important to have that connection to that vigor, that virility, that fertility. So it was very much revered. And also in, in women to see the beauty of the breasts, honoring the milk that came, honoring life force, honoring sexuality. It was celebrated. Sexuality was deeply celebrated mm -hmm. and considered a sacred part of being a human and being alive. So, uh, yes, they, of course, sexuality and sexual energy was very important. Also, what's a similarity is what you would call the Kundalini, which was also like the Sikhim energy, which is the serpent energy. Mm -hmm. So you will see that once you have awakened the dormant energy that has risen through the spine, which would be called the jet pillar, which is 
the the spine of Osiris or Osan, which is like that resurrection of our spinal cord energy, which is pretty much similar to the Indian Tantra system, mm -hmm. is that it becomes erect and from that the serpent energy does rise and awaken through the crown and you'll see that that many pharaohs priests priestesses the netaru all have serpents arising through their crown right. and often you'll see beautiful wings coming out of that so there's the winged serpent uh -huh. which yes That's so like yeah. Lucius, right the medical system with the two snakes and then the wings at the top like the expansion. yes yes that that's connected there huh and so do you think they were teaching in these ancient systems, were they teaching people not only to enjoy their fertility and their breasts and their lingam, but also to channel that it was that energy that they were inviting people to raise up? But what did you call it? The jet uh, pillar? The jet pillar is like the spinal cord. And then, yeah. That, yes. Like yeah. <laughs> and yeah. there were teachings around how to, how to raise that energy? Yes, definitely. They were very masterful with that and in a way it wasn't to it was to connect to the intelligence of nature itself so when we arouse that and awaken it we become in a way at one with nature and our our mind somewhat becomes intelligent like nature itself so we see things as they are we're awakened we're clear basically you know i don't think they i think they just became so clear in a way their vision their perception there wasn't veils and distortions. So yes, it was a way to connect to nature and to be at one with that, you know. Mm -hmm. Nature was the divine, uh, mm -hmm. the signature of divinities and every little thing that we can see and touch. So yes, and the sensu the temples were full of sensuality, you know, uh, lovemaking, music. Um, there's different temples up the up the Nile and what I've heard that resonates because I've journeyed this journey myself as a pilgrim many times is that it's set up like a system of the body so the south going all the way up to the north so it's like awakening this energy and when we get to, love that <laughs> <laughs> yes and when we get to the temple of Dendera which was specifically for the you know the priests priestesses that, that worked with sexual energy there were huge temple complexes that were created to specifically work with that energy. So yes, Amazing. and if, yeah. So yes, but I have to say, there's so much still to uncover. I journey with the land as my way of really tapping into and journeying with the temples to tap into these ancient teachings. But I am finding that it's a great, you know, of course, like anything, there's so much learning and experience and study to have. But I do feel this is starting to sprout more in the world as the authentic teachings that came from Kemet, from Egypt. And there are incredible tantric teachings, so to say, coming from the land that I am just tapping into myself and I, yeah so you're going to be um, appearing with us on the Kundalini symposium this weekend can you give us yes. a little bit I guess you'll be delving more into this is that uh, is that going to be part of your class yes yes are exactly sharing practices or are there any uh, practices from the system or meditation there are there are so many beautiful practices and journeys too um i will be offering a transmission and also when i offer a transmission it's very much experiential you'll feel it through your body and at the end i will offer um a, a personal journey through this energy system to really start to feel it in the body and have a tangible experience which i think is very valuable <laughs> yeah so i'm so very excited and yeah, I just I just want to mention the backstory that there's such a synchronicity because we had someone else on the symposium who said, "Oh, I really want to leave leave breathwork of Egyptian tantra," and I was like, "Egyptian tantra," and uh, <laughs> I wrote to him like, "I'm not sure. I like never heard of this before." And then exactly that day, you wrote a message spontaneously to us, just introducing yourself. I mean, I've met you of course before, but you know, introducing your teachings, and we couldn't believe it. Like, wow that's an amazing synchronicity and the person before him had just dropped out and there was this perfect slot so i feel there are some amazing universal forces bringing this information through you and through him um now right now so i'm very excited about uh, about the backstory you know <laughs> i agree <laughs> so 
Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I feel it's because this really does want to start to spread more because there is so yeah. much to be, so much wisdom. And uh, yeah, it really connects also to the soul of the human. Like the Egyptian system or the Kemetic system is very much connected to the heart and soul mm. of humanity. And I feel that's where it really is important now that we touch into that heart and soul of our humanity, our humanness. And there, there's beauty and extraordinary um extraordinary things can happen from that so yes wow oh well thank you so much for thank you. Thank you putting your life into being you know exploring this path bringing it through studying it practicing it and thank you for offering to to come to lift tantra and share yes I look thank you for having me so yeah all right